Hi guys, in this video I want to show you the game of the greatest chess players in the history of chess. Robert James Fisher with white pieces and Michal Tal with black pieces. They played this game at the candidates back in 1959. Let's take a look. Fisher with white pieces goes 1e4. Tal responds with c5. We have Sicilian defense and we do have very popular line back in those days and i think today still neidorf variation white goes with bishop to c4 this is a sideline called sozini one of my favorite chess names where white actually is very much concentrated to the center and towards to the f7 pawn and black has its own ideas to somewhere kick b5 then bishop to b7 and to play on the queen side. This pawn is uh, actually one of the gate pawns here in the center, which stops the bishop being super active on this diagonal. So this is a theory here. f4 has been played by Fischer. Usually white here goes castle first and then f4, but here we have a crazy game. So f4 has been played before hitting the knight. And when knight goes, then the pawn on e4 is hanging this is a central pawn why not to take it tal asked himself and he captured the pawn fisher here castled and after g6 black actually decided to fianc to this bishop on g7 and castle here what responds with a typical breakthrough a5 you guys can memorize this move uh wherever you have the pawn structure like that f5 is a very powerful move so what happens here black can capture this pawn twice g takes or e takes if e takes that actually opens up the d file square so bishop d5 actually can be played right away uh, so pawn takes on f5 from g and that actually also opens up the g file for the black shrook and now white's next move is crazy knight to f5 a peace sacrifice this is actually one of the common sicilian sacrifices knight to f5 or knight to d5 so the idea is that after taking here on f5 the bishop is wide open here and queen d5 actually wins here a material because the rook is hanging here the pawn is hanging here too you can of course play rook to a7 in this position to avoid losing in one move now white has a very strong move queen to d4 and this is a double rook attack so black has to decide which rook to lose here and white is actually having a winning position so knight to f5 is another beautiful move has been played by fisher here in this game so um actually the threat is also queen to d4 this will be another double attack so black just played here rook to g8 to avoid all these uh, traps and now Fisher goes another insane move, bishop to d5, hitting the rook and the knight at the same time. And if you capture this bishop now, queen gets on d5, rook is hanging, knight is hanging, and f7 pawn is also in danger. So at this point, black can give up the knight back, but we have to take a moment to send some condolences here to the blacks development look at those pieces and the knight here is actually hanging so this is a nightmare for black and for that reason after bishop to d5 black just decided to ignore a bishop and played rook to a7 uh, you can see the engine is evil here so it means that black is also making uh only moves here in this position to survive after rook to a7 here uh, Fischer went bishop to e4, uh, captured this knight back. Uh, Tal captured the knight on f5, and we have bishop to f5. So at this point, again, there are not many pieces developed in the black's position. Also, king lost the right to castle. Well, the king can still move from the starting position, but both rooks moved away so basically this king can never castle and has to stay on this open e file so here tal makes really good move rook to e7 to cover the king and now uh black's king is uh, way more safe uh white goes here bishop takes bishop queen takes bishop and bishop to f4 d6 pawn is hanging black responds here queen to c6 
hitting on g2 that's a checkmate in one move and knight on a4 so this is a double attack and at this point i thought the game is over because white is basically losing here a knight but Fischer says not yet. I have queen to f3. And the idea is that when you capture the knight on a4, now I capture the pawn on d6 and the knight is hanging. So if you play knight to d7, there we have this little trick here. Queen to a8 and it's a winning position for white. So if you play knight to c6, this knight is actually guarded by the queen. Now white has very strong move, bishop to e7. And basically you can capture this bishop back, but the pawn on f7 is hanging and the rook is hanging on g8 as well. So after taking here, black can here just resign uh, as black has two uh, minor pieces against white's two rooks and exposed king. Uh, so after bishop to d6, uh, basically here black has to give up the knight and play it Queen to c6, very smart move. When you have extra material, it is always good to uh, trade the pieces, especially the queen, um, when we don't have a king safety. So here, white captured the knights. Uh, black went for queen to b6. Another double attack here, double threat. Uh, the bishop is hanging and there is a check. So king went on h1. Uh, black captured the bishop. White here went for queen to c6 and that is a little bit inaccuracy instead of that uh, here Fischer could play actually rook to a to e1 pin this rook here and ask for some troubles on f7 pawn so basically now queen to f7 is a serious threat uh, the rook on g8 will be hanging and uh, if black decides to capture here the rook uh, in between move now we also have in between move queen to f7 and basically this is simply winning position for us and black can actually just resign so coming back here uh fisher's first inaccuracy is queen to c6 check after rook to d7 this rook is pinned so now we have a check on the board rook to e1 bishop to e7 and uh, rook to f7 it is quite tempting uh, move here to sacrifice the rook for a moment and get the king even more exposed queen to e6 check and now the rook on d7 is just captured so if king goes on e8 and guards this rook then another rook is hanging and in fact it is a checkmate i think that was the beauty of this queen c6 move and fisher was uh Fischer liked this position so much, so he didn't really consider it here another move. Uh, like, for instance, king to f8, queen to d7 has been played, and now queen to d6. And at this point, there is not too much of the danger to black's king. Uh, black is also uh, ready to trade the queens here. White says, no, thanks very much, rook to g6. The idea is now to play something like uh, king to f7 to put the pieces together maybe somewhere to play rook to h6 to hit on this pawn so white goes with c3 white wants to white actually needs a plan right so at this point the king is exposed but we have only two pieces and we cannot really go crazy with these two pieces it's not enough forces so here fisher just decided to create a past pawn why not black responded with a5 and after this check on c8 queen to c4 has been played uh bishop goes on d8 black actually wants to uh, set up the uh very nice battery uh towards h2 pawn pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and g3 uh so here fisher decided to set up this pawn structure to make sure that there's no back rank issue to the king uh black here goes with queen to c6 queen trade and this is the position very interesting end game black goes here with rook to b6 to guard the pawn on b4 and after the storm this is move 34 now tal can actually breathe in this position the danger is gone the king is now safe uh also tal has extra piece for just two pawns uh, but Tal has to be very careful. Guys, if Fisher here managed to trade all the queen side pawns and rooks, 
this position is a draw because uh tal here has wrong color bishop so basically if you try very hard to promote this pawn it is impossible but for that uh, fisher needs to um trade all the pawns on the queen side which is a very difficult task indeed because black has extra piece and black will do everything to avoid that let's see now how the end game goes and what is the technique of tal here to win this game king to f6 centralizing the king king f3 and king e5 black is the first who gets the most out of the center king e3 and bishop to g5 uh, giving this check now hitting the rook on c4 and bishop back on f6 attacking the pawn on b2 so basically if you play b3 here black will go with bishop to c3 this bishop will guard the pawn on b4 pawn guards the bishop and then the black rook will be free to move around maybe to attack the weakness here or maybe to go to the other side to attack another weakness or just to give the check to the white's king so that was the idea of bishop to f6 white here went for rook to c2 white has to be a little bit passive here in this position obviously it's not dreamy position anymore and white has to do its best to trade the pawns on the queen side rook to e2 rook to f6 and here we have a repetition from white white would be so happy to make a draw king to e2 and now rook goes back on f7 king d3 they are repeating the position bishop to d4 just squeezes the position uh so well here maybe somewhere rook to f2 will also work so white goes a3 just you know if you take i take and if you go also this move i take here and this is a draw because basically you have only one pawn left and it will not be easy to promote this pawn here because it's a light square and you have dark square bishop so it is just a draw uh, all right after a3 b3 has been played of course here this is a great move also just blocking the pawn on the dark square so this pawn will be hanging forever on b2 white goes now rook to c8 uh, basically there is no um, chance here to fight on the second rank for instance if you go here rook to e2 you will anyway lose this pawn because there is a check and bishop captures the pawn on b2 you guys tell me what happens after rook to d2 this is such a fancy uh position how would you play uh after this one would you give a check would you just trade the rooks uh what would be your uh move of the choice here let me know in the comment section so fisher here decided to go active and to play rook to c8 that allowed uh tal to capture the pawn on b2 and here we have some check the pawn on b3 is hanging but black should not give up this pawn for sure rook to c3 check and now king to c7 hitting the rook on b8 now rook to b5 has been played bishop goes on a1 this is not the perfect square for the bishop but that's the next rook bishop so it can do whatever it wants so maybe the next move will be b2 and just uh white is not uh capable to stop this pawn uh, promoting and also the bishop keeps the eye on the rook on c3 so we have a beautiful uh structure here uh, by the uh, black species here so b2 um b2 rook to c1 and b1 uh queening is the black's idea here so after a4 has been played b2 and basically this king cannot uh get closer to the pawn and at this point uh fisher just resign here so let's see what happens after king to a5 now the rook is controlling the file but as we mentioned rook comes on c1 and basically b1 is the next move and white cannot do much about this there's no also check or there's no idea of this stalemate so basically this is just lost even though fisher played this amazing and crazy game tal was his opponent and tal also made one of the best moves in this position not to lose it uh and i can say that this game is one of the craziest games i have ever seen do let me know in the comment section if you like this game and i'll see you in the next video